and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the books I hope you're all doing very very well the washing's going in it let me close the door hold on hold on that ended up being a double door close for double the quietness from the washing machine so today's video is all about the books that I'm planning on reading in the month of October there's quite a few here and I've themed them on a sort of there's some spooky books and there's some autumnal books maybe a bit of cozy reading because that tis the season isn't it tis the season for spooky and cozy i've just looked at how much highlighter i've got today tis the season for a lot of highlighter it looks let's start with the sort of spooky or maybe halloween themed books with the first one which is halloween party by agatha christie i was watching a reading vlog i can't even remember who the channel was i think it just come up on my suggested and i wasn't subscribed to them but it was a spooky reading vlog um in a crematorium or a crematorium or a graveyard um and she was reading this halloween party at a halloween party joyce a hostile 13 year old boasts that she once witnessed a murder when no one believes her she storms off home but within hours her body is found still in the house drowned in an apple bobbin tub that night Hercule Poirot is called in to find the evil presence but first he must establish whether he is looking for a murderer or a double murderer so that's that one Halloween party and um, then I've got Salt Slow by Julia Armfield now this is a collection of stories and what drew me in here so I was I was working through my white books when I was filming um the white bookshelf tour um and the first line here is in her brilliantly inventive and haunting haunting being the operative word debut collection of stories julia armfield explores body and the bodily mapping the skin and bones of her characters through their experiences of isolation obsession love and revenge um yeah and i thought that would be great to sort of like maybe pick up a little story every now and again um and i've still got um our wives under the sea by julia armfield to read as well so this will be a good intro i guess if i enjoy her short stories um then i've got the bewitching this is a proof copy this came out in july this year um this is by jill dawson and um, it says here alice samuel might be old and sharp-tongued but she's no fool uh, uh, visiting her it's very old text and i was about to say unsitting visiting her new neighbors in her fenland village she suspects squire throckmorton's household is not as god-fearing as it seems and finds the children troubled yet when one of the daughters accuses her of witchcraft alice has no inkling of how quickly matters will escalate and fails to grasp the danger she is in as evidence mounts up against alice soon the entire village is swept up in the frenzied persecution of one of their own communities so this is actually based on um, the 16th century case of the Witches of War Boys. Now, I read last year, The Manning Tree Witches, we read that for my Patreon book club, which the next book coming up is the book that we're reading for Patreon book club. And I didn't like The Manning Tree Witches at all. I found it a bit boring, if I'm being honest. So I'm hoping that I'll get a bit more out of this. And also, as a proof, look at that, gold foiling on a proof. You don't often get that, guys. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to reading that. And then, as I said, we've got the book that um, we will be reading for uh, Patreon book club. The theme was Women with Powers. And this was the book that won. It's Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. Um, and this, it says here, this is a, there is never a good time to start hearing a voice in your head, especially a bossy one. Bro jobless and having just graduated jessamine is reluctantly leaving her life in america to return home to malaysia a place she hasn't been since her childhood jess soon learns that the voice in her head belongs to armar her late grandmother armar worshipped a local malaysian deity the black water sister but when a business tycoon offended the goddess armar swore revenge now she's decided that her granddaughter can help her with a mission whether she wants to or not drawn into a world of ghosts god and her family shenanigans jess soon realizes that getting a job will be the least of her worries so yeah sounds great doesn't it looking forward to that and then the last one is one i haven't even hauled yet i picked it up from the um charity um shelf at my work the hospital that i work at um and it's witches because it's her majesty's royal coven by juno dawson i believe this is set to be a i follow juno on um instagram and i've got a feeling that she's writing a whole collection of these or like a series i don't know but this is the first one i think i'm sure it is um it says hidden among us is a secret coven of witches known as her majesty's royal coven they protect crown and country from magical forces and otherworldly evil but their greatest enemy will come from within there are whisperings of a prophecy that will bring the coven to its knees and four best friends are about to be caught at the center will helena neve leonie and Elle be able to stop the prophecy before it's too late or will the differences that have seen them grow apart since childhood be too great to overcome life as a modern witch was never simple but now it's about to get apocalyptic 
So yeah, this oh this is the first ad I thought it was YA, so this is the first book that Juno's written um, for an adult. So the first adult series, the stories of ancient prophecies and modern dating of sacred sisterhood and demonic frenemies. Yeah, so I think that sounds super fun. And um, I read well, we read for Patreon book club last year actually Juno's um, Christmas book, Stay Another Day, which we all got on very well. We're very readable. So there's that. So that's the sort of like spookier stuff and witchy and. Halloween -y. then I've got a few things that are sort of screaming autumn or screaming coziness at me first of all is this front cover I mean come on ignore me take a moment to appreciate that front cover as I peek round this is by Rowan and you by Melissa Harrison I've read all among the barley by Melissa Harrison she's an, and I've actually seen her speak about it at Cambridge Literary Festival she's an amazing nature writer and this is a middle grade book that she's written I can't stop looking at this front cover it's got berries it's got a blackbird it's got a fox it's got autumnal leaves it's got toadstools it's just beautiful it's so so beautiful um and it says here as autumn arrives heart eyes moss sorrel Burnett, and dormer decide to return home to ash road to unravel a riddle that might explain why they're kind of fading from the wild world when you're only one hand high it's a journey filled with both danger and delight golden leaves shiny conkers and the brightest of berries but also storms and the first frost of winter. I can't believe this. Their friendship, good sense and humour on their side, but will it be enough to secure a future for the hidden folk? Or will they need to go further and find a way of work with the most unreliable of creatures, humans? Oh, so this is a sequel to the, the first book, which is Ash, Oak and Thorn. Will I maybe get hold of Ash, Oak and Thorn and read that first? Also, the end papers are like this charmingly beautiful map. Absolutely gorgeous. What a beautiful, beautiful little book. Maybe I will get hold of the first one. Maybe I will and see if I can read that first. But if not, I mean, if you've read the series, could you just go straight into this? Let's have a look. And then I've got um, The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox by Maggie O'Farrell. I don't know why this is screaming. I'm actually reading a Maggie O'Farrell book at the moment. More on that later. But something about her books are very sort of all-encompassing. And I don't know what it is about this is making me feel cosy but it's set in edinburgh in the 1930s and the lennox family is having trouble with their youngest daughter esme she's outspoken unconventional and repeatedly embarrasses them in polite society something will have to be done years later a young woman named iris lockhart receives a letter informing her that she has a great aunt in a psychiatric unit who's about to be released iris has never heard of esme lennox and the only person and the one person who should know more, her grandmother Kitty, seems unable to answer Iris's questions. What could Esme have done to warrant a lifetime in an institution? And how is it possible for a person to be so completely erased from a family's history? There we go. Then I've got The House Opposite by Barbara Noble, bought for me by a lovely uh, viewer from my wish list. Um, and this is about Elizabeth Simpson, who is sim secretly, sorry, sorry, she's a secretary, but she's also secretly having an affair with her married boss. Um, her, it's, it's set during the war and her father is an air raid warden and her terrified mother takes her courage from concealed bottles of rum. Owen Cathcart, their neurotic teenage neighbor, slips out during night raids to watch the fireworks and collect souvenirs of shrapnel. And Bob Craven, a soldier Elizabeth uses as a cover for her illicit romance, plans his taxi rides to see the most dramatic bomb damage. In a riveting drama of life during the Blitz, the extraordinary immediacy and vivid Im intimate detail stem directly from the first-hand experiences of Barbara Noble, who wrote this book, who lived and worked in London throughout the war. The result is a unique social document and an unforgetting reading experience. Our edition includes a new introduction by Connie Willis. I think the reason I'm feeling like this is autumnal um, is because it sounds a lot to me like The Night Watch and Sarah Waters for me is peak autumnal reading. Um, so yeah. I'm looking forward to reading that as well. Then I've got The End We Start From. Um, and this, again, this is one that I picked up when I was doing my white books and I thought I'd love to read this. This is about as floodwaters close over London, a woman gives birth to her first child. Days later, they're forced to leave home in search of safety. They head north through a Britain that is changed beyond recognition, a familiar place made dangerous, its people becoming refugees. Yet against all odds, the baby thrives. He learns to smile, to laugh, to crawl. And as their story unfolds and the country falls apart around them, this mother's world promises new life and fresh hope. Hope. So yeah, this also looks like it'll be a really quick read as well. Like the the, the the text on the page is very sparse. I think sparse is the word. Then I picked up a book from the library only not yesterday, the day before. Might have been yesterday, no Wednesday. Um, and that's Trust by Hernan Diaz. This is currently on the Man Booker long list, so I've seen it on Jen's channel, uh, the vlog that she's been reading that. I don't know if the shortlist has come out now. Who knows? I'm, I'm very behind on my um, booktube watching. And then I've also seen it mentioned on Emma from Drinking By Myself and the Book Break channel. Uh, this is... Oh, I, also, I've got a note mentioned because I didn't realise this when I first saw it, and it's only when Emma mentioned it. Look at this front cover. So it's got like a sort of like, I guess, New York um, 
like skyline set over the course of books and i think this is like a book within a book within a book so you lead so you sort of like unravel stuff which i'm really into even though oh even through the raw and effervescence lovely word to say of the 1920s Everyone in New York, I was right, has heard of Benjamin and Helen Rask. He is a legendary Wall Street tycoon. She is the daughter of eccentric aristocrats. Together they have risen to the very top of the world of seemingly boundless wealth as all as a decade of excess and speculation draws to an end. But at what cost have they acquired their immense fortune? This is the mystery at the centre of Bonds, a successful 1937 novel that all of New York seems to have read. Yet there are other versions in this tale, of this tale of privilege and deceit. Yeah. It's an immersive story and a brilliant literary puzzle. It engages the reader in a quest for the truth while confronting the deceptions that often live at the heart of relationships, the reality warping forces of capital and the case with which power can manipulate force. Facts. God, I can't stop reading words that aren't even there. Then I've got a few books that I've started and I would like to finish and I thought I would mention them. First of all, I would mention them because Pet, I think, is perfect sort of like reading for October. It is about monsters. I started reading this on my uh, reading vlog um, a couple of weeks ago and I got to chapter three, but then other things, book club books and things like that have taken over. So I need to go back to that. But yeah, that sort of is quite, I think, october due to the appearance of monsters. Then I started reading again before other things got in the way. Um, I Belong Here, which is a non-fiction book by Anita Sethi, uh, Journey Along the Backbone of Britain. Uh, and this is Anita um, walking along the backbone of Britain um, following a racist attack on her um, <clears throat> on a train. And it's her sort of like... Um, evaluating the attack and thinking about things whilst also um, connecting with nature and um, thinking about her past connections with nature and what it's like to be a person of colour connecting with nature. Um, and I'm finding it really, um, really, really like a beautiful read, but also such a sort of difficult read because that um, racist attack sort of hangs over the whole book. Um, so I'm just under halfway through, so I will get round to finishing that as well. And then as I said, um, I've just started The Marriage Portrait by Maggie Fa O'Farrell. Um, this is, I've got to have this read because I got it on a two week loan. I got three books on a two week loan. I only managed to read one of them, which was um, Lessons in Chemistry. And then when I took the other two back, they said to me, oh, you've got a book waiting here. And by accident, I'd put two reservations on the marriage portrait. So I handed back one copy of the marriage portrait, got this copy. So I need to read this because um, there's a very long wait. Now, I've only read 44 pages. Um, you may well have seen, I was reading this at my mum and dad's and my niece, who loves to tell stories, was uh, pretending to uh, read it and tell stories. And I will insert a clip of that here if I can, because it is adorable um, and hilarious. So we're both reading this, me and my niece. It was sunny morning night. It was dark to sleep well. It couldn't know what it was. And somebody was moving. And he wasn't in the bed. Ooh. And he was crossing and he was banging and on the ground and he wake him up. What's this? What book is this? Oh, it's The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, crashing and banging. It was banging and crashing. Then I've just got a few books that appeared on my TBR last month, just because I'm not prepared to, to not read them yet. And I want to get these things read before. Like November, I sort of count as a, like, because it's my birthday month, I like to read, like, my favourite books, rereads maybe, wrap up anything that I haven't read, because in December, well, it's going to be a busy December, December is the month that I read um, mainly Christmas books. So I thought I would just go over some of the books that I had on my TBR last month that I would still like to read before the year is done. Uh, that's uh, How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo and Bew. I'll link my other TBR are down below so you can hear more about it. Complicit by Winnie M. Lee. I'd actually like David and I to read this aloud to one another because I think we both really enjoy it. It's set in the um, film industry. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we both enjoy it. So I think we're going to read that aloud. Then Paper Girls Volume 1, which I promised David I will read because we want to start watching Paper Girls, uh, the TV adaptation of it. Um, that won't take me long, so maybe I'll do that soon. Then Light Seekers by Femi Coyote because it's a murder mystery and I thought that would fit in quite well with October as well. Um, it's set in Nigeria and it's about three students being brutally murdered in the uh, Nigerian university town. And then last one is um, True Biz by uh, Sarah Novick, um, which is about a school um, for deaf kids. Um, and the book itself has like lots of little bits about um, sign language and stuff. It just sounds super interesting. So yeah, need to get to that as well. So those are the books that I hope to read in October. Quite a lot, isn't there? Um, let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know what you're planning to read this month. And I will see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye.